Hello and welcome to SD Access Bootcamp videos number three. I hope you are enjoying the series so far. So today what we have in agenda, we are going to integrate DNA Center and Cisco Identity Service Engine. Before this video, we have done a fresh install of our DNAC. We have upgraded our eyes, but there is no configuration as such. Now we are going to make a integration between them, put an integration between them, and that's what we are going to do in this video. Let's look at the high level steps. Basic configuration, first we are going to do basic configuration on ICE, which is ERS configuration, PX grid, etc. Then we will kick off integration workflow from DNAC side. So from DNAC side, we are going to say that we want to add an ICE server. And for that, you have to fill up a form. Once you fill up a form, what DNAC is going to do, DNAC is going to use SSH and RESTful APIs to talk to eyes, discover the various personas, assuming you have a distributed eyes, that means you have PAN, PSN, and MNT. In our setup, we are going to use all-in-one persona, but DNA Center still uses both the method. And that is why if you, uh, now you can connect back to my previous discussion when we were upgrading the eyes, I advise you to keep CLI and S and web UI password same for eyes because during integration we are going to provide just one password and that password will be used for SSH as well as RESTful APIs. Hence you need both the password to be same on eyes side. Finally uh, uh, on eyes side you need to provide uh, acceptance for DNAC subscription request. So that's what we are going to do in our next uh, I'm going to play a video and I'll walk you through the steps. Now, this is our newly installed eyes and we are going to perform the basic configuration to integrate with DNS Center. You can go to gear icon and click on a account setting about identity service engine. It will show you the software version and the chassis number. So we are running eyes 3.0 here. You can click on hamburger icon, go to administration and under administration deployment, you can see we have RTP eyes deployed as, um, this is my standalone eyes. It has all the personas, all in one kind of configuration and role is standalone. Mm -hmm. Here you can see, you can enable different services just by toggling the button and the service, what is of our interest is PX grid because PX grid will enable client, uh, publisher and subscriber relationship between DNAC and ICE so that I can publish the attributes. Also, we are going to change the role as a primary so that in future, if we have a uh, need to scale, we can add other personas to this because you cannot add any new personas to all in one or standalone. So it's better to keep uh, the role as primary. So it gives you a uh, future scale. And now I'm clicking, uh, I clicked on save and it is making changes in the back end. Since you are switching uh, the role, it may take a little bit of time. So be patient because it's making changes in the background. Do not flip, uh, wait for uh, a success or error message to pop up. Server response, node was updated successfully. Okay, and now role is primary. Profiling configuration. Uh, here you can see various profile related settings. Uh, we are not dealing with profile yet, uh, but uh, it's good to see what it goes under it. And here also you can have PX grid services, but this is for profile, strictly for profiling. So you don't have to enable it now. These are like advanced use cases. All right, now we are going to enable ERS. So under setting, ERS setting, you can see you have ERS setting for primary administration node. That's where we want our ERS services to be enabled. And also you have this link to the documentation which talk about what is ERS, external RESTful API service, how it works, what kind of uh, transport it require and what is the port number it require. So here what we want to do, we want to enable ERS read and write only on PAN node 
and keep e disable on other node. Also, CSRF ch check, which is not important anymore, uh, because if you are using IS uh, three uh, 2.3 and above, you can keep it disabled. So enable ERS, keep CSRF disabled, and click on save. All right, a warning is presented. Yes, I would like to continue. And here you can see server response was very quick. Configuration was saved successfully. Okay. If you want to read through the documentation, just click on the link. Use the username and password of your ICE engine and it will open up the documentation. So you can read through the document that uh, what is ERS, it can help you perform crude operation, which is create, read, update, and delete operation, and how you can, who can be a ERS admin. So either you can create a specific admin or particular admin uh, user and assign it to the ERS admin group, or as what we are going to do in our case, we will assign ERS admin privileges to our default admin user, which is uh, the D, uh, admin. So we are not going to create two separate users. So if you want to find out more, please read through the document. It's a very uh, good document and it has a lot of uh, interesting details in in it. All right, this is a new ICE UI, which has a massive upgrade from 2.6. Now, the final step of the configuration in ICE, what we want to do, we want to go to uh, the PX grid, um, policy uh, px grid clients so today we have we do not have any client that's why it's empty but as you will see that when dnac and ice is integrated dnac will show us as a client so under px grid what we want to do we want to enable the setting which actually automatically approve new certificate based account that means when we peer dnac dnac will send a request and ice is configured to auto approve that request so that's what we are doing. Otherwise, if you don't enable this, you will see DNAC is waiting here in client for approval. So ICE configuration is done. Now let's go to Cisco DNS Center, system, settings, and here you can scroll or you can search authentication. I'm going to say authentication and policy server. You can click add and you can add AAA or ICE, but we are going to add ICE as a server. So this is the form presented to you. You need server IP address, shared secret, username, password, and the complete FQDN of your ICE server. And to find the FQDN, you will need to make sure that you have a domain name configured so that you can derive FQDN for your server. And that is going to be your host name plus domain name. So I have the IP address. I have two IP addresses. I'm going to peer with my out of band IP address here in this case. That means it's just for peering. And here is some uh, in, uh, useful command line. So you can tail the logs from DNA center and watch the integration happening. But now it is not important because it is exposed in UI itself and you will see when we uh, perform the add operation here. So put the server IP address, use a shared secret. Um, so this will be used for secure tunneling and then username, password, and FQDN. You do not need any virtual IP addresses uh, if you are using uh, ICE uh, directly, peering ICE directly, but if you are using any load balancers, then yes, you need to uh, define virtual IP addresses. In our case, there is no virtual IP address involved. You can toggle advanced setting and as you can see connect to px grid so i'm not just uh, making an integration on ssh and other but i want to make an integration for px grid as well okay you can use these commands in dnac cli so that as we start the integration you can watch the logs 
on CLI itself. But again, as I mentioned, uh, with newer version of DNA Center, uh, the logs uh, and different steps are already exposed in UI, which make uh, the integration uh, much more transparent and consumable. All right, as you can see, uh, we are running Guardian and Maglev restrictive shell is active. Um, that means you cannot run certain commands. So what you can do, you can disable, uh, for now in this release, at least you can do a underscore shell and you put the password and try to disable that. We are not going to do that. We are going to just tail uh, some service log from the design. And with dash hyphen R hyphen F, you are actually tailing in real time. So the logs will be showing real time in your console or uh, SSH CLI. Some commands get de deprecated time on time. So please read through the documentation uh, to make sure you are using the right command or the latest command. As you can see, uh, here I'm doubting maybe this is the restrictive shell which is not letting me put this command. So I'm, I am going to disable the restrictive shell by underscore shell and put the password. Okay, so I am not in now in unrestricted shell and let's see if I can run this command. Okay, command not found. Maybe this is deprecated. So let's not waste much time here. Uh, we are already telling the design logs and let's go to the eyes. Yes, we are here in DNA Center ready to submit the form. You can see it's using the standard ports 1812 and 1813 and now integration is in progress. As you can see, the entire step-by-step -step integration process is visible in UI itself. You can check certificate, what is the certificate DNAC is presenting and uh, uh, what it is receiving, everything is exposed in UI. So certificate hand, uh, hand, handshake is happening here. Initial configuration, I'm going to say accept. Now it is establishing the trust, that means reading, validating and storing trusted certificate on both sides. Okay, this is a network design log. Let's see if we can see something interesting here. You can see publishing and successfully publish some event. Not very consumable uh, at this point of time. So I'll rather focus on the right side. And as you can see, discovering node, discovering ICE primary and secondary admin node and a PX grid node, connection to PX grid, loading, validating PX grid certificate, subscribing to PX grid topic. Everything is success. So it looks like uh, our peering is successful, our integration is successful. Let's validate that. What you can do, you can go to system, system 360. This is a snapshot. If you scroll down, you'll see externally connected systems. And here you can see we have the primary uh, uh, connection with ICE. Also, we have a PX grid connection with ICE. Though they are the same ICE in this case, but still we are making two connections, one for receiving policies and other for, for uh, attribute, which is on PX grid. And under client, you can see we have PX grid connection available. It is auto approved. If you go to ICE diagnostic, you can see all the new certificate or, um, uh, or logs being populated here, as you can see. what all uh, event it has subscribed all the you know, all those details are in log for px grid now under websocket you can see your dnac client is here and these are the topic we subscribe from ice so dnac is being a client or a subscriber and ice is being publisher for those topics You can also run health monitoring test. But at this point of time, we are uh, very in very good shape. We have DNAC and ICE integration completed. All right. I'm going to just do a few uh, other things. So if you want to, uh, you are interested 
to download the logs from iSide. This is what you have to do. You have to go to the di uh, troubleshoot and download logs. Here you can see iSPSC logs the, is available. You can download these logs uh, in, in these are generated during the integration process. So if you want to understand things in more detail, probably you can download these logs. And I'm going to put a link to the uh, video which I uh, created some time back and there we discuss the step-by-step -step, um, details of DNAC and ICE integration. So please watch that video. Now you can see on DNAC side, we see the radius ICE is status is active and that is it. So we are, we are done with our DNAC integration and uh, we are good to go to the next step. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.